Man, this is about that time. Let me ring this bell and let these people know, man, the black market is back open. It's right back open. It ain't nothing to worry about. You thought it was closed, but we be open. Sometimes we be open and they think it's closed. Mm. J-O-N, I heard people walk around here with bad credit and that just won't do. So I had to call some people that know some people that's in touch with the people who be getting stuff done. And then they referred me to this dude who know a dude, who called a dude, who got a text back from a guy. Then once we got in touch with the guy, the guy put us in touch with his big homie. And then with his big homie, referred us to his best friend's son, nephew. <laughs> and here we are. Now, a lot of people talk about money. A lot of people get online and make a lot of promises about what they can do and what you need to do and how you ain't doing it. But I know this dude good because he worked with somebody that I know personally <laughs> who I thought it just wasn't no hope. <laughs> now, if you that good, you got to be on the couch. And you know exactly who I'm talking I know about. Exactly who Ladies talking about. and gentlemen, I would like to welcome to the black market, Mr. Will Roundtree. Now you see, I got my notes. Don't I think see. you're gonna leave nothing out. Hey, I'm here. I got in the, uh, my research team went deep. Please. We contacted your auntie at her job. Which one? I got like eight of them. I'm saying your mother's older sister. Okay, okay. We okay. found the auntie that act exactly like your mom. You know, everybody got that one auntie <laughs> that's really like your other mom. The one that whooped me when I was exactly. young. Exactly. That's I already who I'm know. talking about. I told you I went, I was in Mississippi. That's how they do it down there. And that's how I was able to get the information. See, I already know. Once you come to Mississippi, look, we all I related. have to read your file. We all, we all I have know each other. Yeah, let them in. <laughs> That's, I'm, a, I'm an ambassador to Mississippi. There you go. I'm in touch with the people who don't be in touch with people like go. us. But welcome to the black market. Man, How you been, it, G? Man. Bro, I'm blessed, man. This has been several years in the making. Man, how's business? Man, it's going incredible. Especially at times like this. Absolutely. Man, tell us your journey, how you got started, what you do, and what we, and what we need to get in touch with you for. Yeah, absolutely. So, Will Roundtree, I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Graduated high school in Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Mississippi. I told y'all we everywhere. <laughs> and so uh, just like everybody else, I was told go to school, get good grades, get a good job. But I found out that journey doesn't work for everybody. Especially if you're black. Especially if you're black, man. And so uh, I attempted all of those things. And when I got to college, I remember being in my economics class and the teacher was talking about something about economics and how he failed so many times. And so I remember raising my hand and I said, so you can't teach me how to be uh, rich? He said, no, so I dropped out of school. Damn. Yeah, just like that. What if it was just him? It might've been somebody else. Possibly, but apparently somebody was speaking to my, my right. soul. So I, I never went back. And then just from there, just started taking odds and end jobs, was working at this company for about seven, eight years. I thought I was gonna retire. I was marking the X's off every year I was there. Word. And so after about seven, eight years, that company shut down and I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. So I actually learned about entrepreneurship in 2003. This was before social media. Right. So got into entrepreneurship, uh, started to learn about how money works, about economics. And then in 2005, I moved to Las Vegas. But when I moved to Vegas, I didn't have anything. So I actually borrowed 500 bucks from who I deemed as my mentor at the time, moved to Las Vegas, and quickly found out how life rough can be when you got bad credit. Uh, couldn't rent an apartment without putting two, three times the deposit down, couldn't buy a vehicle without a co-signer. And so I started to learn that if I wanted to change my circumstances, I had to learn about money. Right. And so I was able to finally fix my credit, but during that time I ended up homeless because I moved to Vegas, I didn't know anybody. 
Damn. And so once I started to really see the power and understanding how credit works, this was around 2005, I was like, man, it got to be something to this. But they never taught us this stuff in school. My parents didn't teach us this. You know, we were talking about bank accounts set up earlier. We used to play beat it to the bank growing up. You ever played that? Was you, yeah. Were y'all any good? I mean, <laughs> yeah, kind of good at it, especially <laughs> when they had when you actually had to write a physical you had, check. Yeah, you had to make sure that buddy was there for the bill beat it to the bank. <laughs> Man. And so we, we were... back when it was Wachovia. Uh, it was that, was, that was that a long time ago. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? I had watched the Mutual. Hey. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, so just through learning through those experiences, and I started to see the power of what credit can do. But then from that standpoint, I had learned about something called creative financing. I read a book by Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, where he talked about the power of leveraging credit. And so, because unfortunately in the black community, we think credit is just about going I'm gonna rewrite that book. I ain't mean to cut you no, off. No, no, you I'm fine. gonna rewrite that book for black kids. No, It's gonna be called Real Dad, Step Dad. Hey, somebody might wanna trademark that right away. <laughs> <laughs> what is it gonna be about? The difference. And what? It's gonna be, a, it's gonna be the same perspective. Okay. Shit that you're gonna learn from your real daddy and your stepdad. Step financial advice. Because yeah. I had a real dad and a stepdad. Right. And that was the same situation. That's why yeah, I read the book. It's, it's I'm like, shit, this ain't this ain't rich dad poor. <laughs> this is real dad and stepdad. You just tried to make the shit sound right, good. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, real <laughs> talk. And so just from learning those concepts, man, I, I started to learn about creative financing. And when he said he bought his first investment property with a credit card. It blew my mind. And so not only did I learn about the importance of improving and, and having established credit, yeah. then I learned how wealthy people use their credit to buy assets. Yeah. So in 2000, so after I you know, fixed my credit, bought my first house. What was some of the first steps that you took to fix your credit? First thing, I had to get out of denial. You know, unfortunately, a lot of times as black people, we like, man, my credit's so bad, if somebody steal it, they can have it. Like we say, ridiculous things like that. And so I had to get out of denial and start to learn that credit wasn't just from a consumer standpoint, because we assume that credit is just to go get a credit card, buy a house and a, and a car. And so the first thing I did was one, I had to learn to be disciplined. Because the thing about credit, we assume that credit puts you in debt. Credit doesn't put you in debt. Somebody who's undisciplined with money puts themselves in debt. Right. And so I, I had to then learn what was a uh, affecting and impacting my credit. And so I, I started to see I wasn't paying my bills on time. So I started to learn the difference between statement dates and due dates. Uh, I started to learn about what makes up a credit score. Right. So keeping my credit card balances low, uh, knowing the type of debt to have, knowing about how uh, the things that can impact your credit by going out there and applying for a bunch of credit cards and, and having bad credit and getting a bunch of inquiries. And just really knowing the five components of what makes up a score. Yeah. Uh, and then started to learn the laws about credit. Meaning like just because something's on your report negatively doesn't mean it have to stay there. Right. There's actually laws put in place to where if they can't validate the debt down to the penny, if you challenge it properly, leveraging the laws that are put in place for us to dispute it, they have to remove it off your report. They got to. They have to. Hell yeah. And so as I just started to learn those things, man. It's and so it, many things. It's man. a lot. We a lot that of ways could be a whole nother show. Credit and so as I started to learn those things, it took me two years to fix my credit personally. Right. Yeah. And so after I did that, like I say, was able to get a house, car. And so um, it's really just so much misinformation out there about credit, man. Well, there's so many people out there taking advantage of people who don't that know. That part too, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad and it's sick. Because people take it, take, people take advantage of in, individuals' ignorance. Right. And that's one of the things that I've always made it my journey to do. I was probably one of the first blacks on the internet really teaching about credit. Word. It wasn't to do credit repair. I don't even, when people say, hey, we got the credit repair guy, Will Roundtree, I actually correct people because I don't really like that term. My, my thing is I'm going to educate you. I don't need to fix your credit to go make money. I can go to the bank and get that. You know, I can go buy it, an round, asset please. to go do that. So yeah. I don't need somebody to let me charge them to fix their credit to make money. That's right. not what I do this for. That's hard. You know, you need that credit, though. Man. You, you do, like you man. Said, so, it's so much. It saves you so much money to have good credit because, like you said, it eliminates having to pay up all these 
deposits and high ass interest rates and like you said, paying your bills on time. Some people pay them on time, but they're not paying the actual bill. They're the just paying amount. the interest. Yeah, yeah, and and that's where I talk about, you know, my four steps of wealth building. Yeah, and and I try to be careful with that word wealth because black people we really don't know what wealth is. Right. I mean, think about it. Who do we know that really actually owned anything? as we were growing up. Right. You know, we didn't own our homes half the time. We didn't own businesses. And so when we think about wealth, we've actually misconstrued making money with wealth. And when you look up the definition of wealth, the layman's terms, it's an accumulation of assets. And so going back to my four steps, first we gotta, it's, the first step is mindset. We gotta have a completely different mindset about just the outcome of what we want our lives to look like financially. Right. If you ask 10 people, they couldn't even tell you. Most of them couldn't. The second step is overstanding the power of credit, not just, hey, let me fix my credit. We got to also learn what the power of credit is. And how to use it. And how to, and use how to it. leverage it. And so, sound like you've been reading my book. I mean, I just, I just look like right. this. <laughs> no, I know you, I know you on your stuff, man. <laughs> and so then step three is uh, financing and understanding the cost of money. The th one of the reasons that I think a lot of especially us in our community, black people get jammed up is because we really don't want to know the value of money and we don't know the cost of something. So for example, you could have a service that I need and you could tell me what the price is and I'll be like, man, Carlos, that's too much. But then I'll go to the club and go blow a bag because I don't understand the value of the price that you charge right. as opposed to saying I'm paying you for the service. No, I'm paying for your value that you can help me to improve my situation. Exactly. And so we don't know the value of things. And this is why I say we gotta learn economics. And then the fourth step, the fourth step is uh, asset building. Right. And that's why you know it's so important that we learn the importance of credit, we learn the importance of financing and the cost of money, because my whole strategy of why I got into the credit space and why I teach people is to show them how to leverage their credit to go buy assets. Right. Assets. And my, my main vehicle is real estate investing. You were just speaking on the difference pretty much on cost and price. Absolutely. Um, for the people who are watching right now, could you give them a give the like can I explain what's going on right now with the with inflation being so high? Oh man. So when you think about what inflation is, it, it happens in several different capacities. Right. One, it's, um, you know, a supply not and demand. Bad. It's not always bad. Sometimes inflation is used to stabilize, exactly. you know, the economy. But because we're not involved in any capacity of the economics, I mean, we don't even own our neighborhoods. So we don't understand how inflation can in improve your situation. So, for example, with the housing market, inflation happens. So also the, uh, the um, you know, the appreciation of our assets increase the properties and different things like that. When inflation decreases, it decreases the value of everything that you own. But because a lot of black people don't own nothing, it, do, it doesn't impact us. We're just like, damn, everything is expensive. Right. But when you put yourself in position, I talk about how real estate and owning real estate helps you to hedge inflation. So for example, they you say, can use the leverage. Well, not only the leverage, when you look at, they <laughs> said that, Inflation has impacted the average family $3,500 to $5,000 a year, right. okay? Now, if you own an investment property that is paying you a monthly rent, because I like buying real estate and holding it so I can get that monthly cash flow. If your net income from that property, and a lot of people don't know the difference between gross and net. So if a company pays you $50,000 a year, that's your gross. What you walk home with, that's your net. So with my net rental income, if you make an average of, you know, let's just say $300 a month after all expenses are paid, that's $3,600 a year. That right there can hedge your inflation, especially with the extra cost in gas, food, et cetera. So we got to start learning these concepts and strategies to help put us in a better financial position. Absolutely. That's why I've been learning this. Absolutely. You must have been on my page. Man, I've been trying to offset okay. my cost. I want to be able to live <laughs> absolutely free. That That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, I try to keep my cost of living extremely, extremely low. Well, then, uh, and then you, ha you have the assets that pay for all of that. You got to buy some assets. You have to, man.
That's, those are things that make you money. A lot of you motherfuckers out here being liabilities and don't even know it. <laughs> you out here costing people money and don't even know it. How do you determine if someone's an asset or liability in your life then? How do I determine? Yeah, I yeah. can give you a perfect ghetto Please example. Do. You know, like when when your cousin be like, oh, I'm fucked up a little bit, cuz can I just can I just get with the stay with you till I get on my feet? See, a liability is the type of motherfucker who will just be laying around, eating all the leftovers and shit, sneaking and stealing little blunt pieces out the <laughs> ashtray. Them liabilities. Our asset cousin is the cousin who's going to be there for maybe a week, then go get a job, then go get a hustle, then stack up some money, then start going in with you on a bill, then start bringing a little weed to the house. If you bringing something in, you an asset. But if you bring taking shit out, you a whole liability. Yeah, exactly. Drinking all them kids' juice, eating popsicles and shit. Over there eating shit that you ain't even bought. You trying to eat the last... Snickers ice cream bar, and you ain't even bought one. <laughs> the nerve of you. That's disrespect. See, it's triggering. Yeah, we all go. We all go through that. Yeah, man. But if you if you're around people who bring shit to your situation, like you said, make it better. Whether it be financial, whether it be shit, just the physical body or the presence, that can be an asset also. Absolutely, I call it the four levels of exchange. Yeah. You know, there's four levels of exchange, and this is how I learn how to deal with people. The first level of exchange is criminal, meaning people who are just taking from you. They're leeches. Right. Usually, yeah, they're definitely not only a liability, but they can put you in, in your life in jeopardy. Exactly. You know, the second one is, 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 you know, partial, meaning they're partially exchanging with you. They pretend like they're helping out. They pretend like they add value, but they usually don't. Right. The third one is called fair, which most people are accustomed to. You know, they say fair exchange, not a robbery. But the, the area that I try to play in is abundance. When you find somebody who over delivers, that's when you know that that person is an asset. They exactly. add value to you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, let them know your social media and where they can catch up with you and start getting some of this game that you got on the credit. Definitely, man. So you can catch me across all social media platforms at Mr. Will Roundtree, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I mean, you can Google me. What's in that box, man? Oh, I brought y'all some track suits, man. Word? Absolutely. What color? Man, I got black, red, you know. Man, you know, I'm a track star. I'm at yeah. that age in my life where if it don't have two pieces, I don't want it. <laughs> I'm not about to be shopping at two different stores. I got shit to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put man. that shit together, man. Definitely, man. I, I bless y'all with some track suits. I need suits. every color. I'm a track suit Definitely, type of Definitely, I got you. And I'm a full-time CEO. I already know That's that. That's your company? Absolutely. Tell them about it. You ain't tell them about it. Man, you know, hey, look. This is this is your tree, promo, Will. CEO. Look, we out here, uh, and, and, and more importantly, a lot of people don't even know what full-time CEO means. I just noticed you got them dog-ass Mississippi State colors. It wasn't even about that. Yeah, it was. I just wanted to make God, sure. Yes, go, bro. Give me old Miss colors, The, the whippets, you know? But no, uh, full-time CEO is my brand, and it's really about a mentality. A lot of people think a full-time CEO is somebody that works for themselves. Somebody who, who is self-employed, really you bought a job. I'm trying to teach people about being a CEO from the standpoint that the CEO is a visionary. And so when you learn how to build a business and build a company, then you, that's, that's, that's the part of the full-time CEO that I'm really trying to teach people and that I embody. It's a lifestyle. It's not just working for yourself. You know, it's you know, getting your health in shape. It's about you know, spending time with your family. Making some money so that you can you can you can also give back in different ways, and right. so being a full time CEO is it's really about a lifestyle. It's not just about working for yourself. You thought this was gonna be easy, didn't you? No. But now I need. So you know we plugged into all the hoods across the world. Sure. I need you to give my audience five little quick things they can start doing right now to start getting that ball rolling about getting the financial literacy, getting the credit together. Stuff that they could do right now that don't cost them nothing. That don't cost them nothing. Give them five little steps. Man, the first thing you can do is go buy my books. They got to buy that. That ain't free. <laughs> I mean, you know, let, let me just get that plug in real quick. Okay, bet. So first of all, you got to go to Amazon and you can get my books. That's What's the, the name first of thing. Full-time CEO, the shit they don't tell you. All right, I'm about to buy it right now there while you, you tell them the rest. Yep. So the first book. Because I support. Appreciate that. Full-time CEO, the shit they don't tell you, which is a book about entrepreneurship. But I talk about the unglamorized side of entrepreneurship. 
Uh, second book is Credit as King, which is more like a manual that's going to walk you through step by step. There are sample letters in there. And the thing that I learned too, Carlos, is that a lot of people have a hard time learning something new because they start to dive into something when they don't understand the terminology. All right, so I'm going to get all three sure. books. Appreciate that, man. So I try Credit to make sure King. that I write it to where people can understand it. And I even put a glossary at the back. So you got Credit as King? Credit as King. And then full -time CEO. Lord of My Land? No, that's not mine. That's not yours? No, sir. Well, I'm not buying that, dude. Yeah, please don't. That's not mine. Hold on, let me see. I got to make sure I get all my royalties. But, but yeah, no, my books and oh, also I buy have audio I know version. who that. That's by, that's by my, my dog. I yeah. buy it. So, yeah, so the, those are the first two. Uh, but, yeah, five steps that I always tell people that uh, could, that doesn't cost them any money is, first of all, have a plan. Right. Like, as simplistic as that sound, a lot of people don't know what they want to do. Okay. So be very clear in what your end goal is. Know what it is that you, the type of result you want. That's the first thing that I would recommend. Number two is, is that you got to put together a budget because a lot of the times people are wanting to become an entrepreneur. They want to invest in companies. They want to do this. They want to do real estate, but they're always operating from a deficit and the little bit of money that they do have, they're, they're, they're playing with it from a place of desperation. So if me and you go into business together and only got, you know, five thousand dollars, I'm counting every single thing that you do right. to ensure I make that five thousand dollars back. And so that's because the rest of my life is in shambles. So a person has to put their plan together and, and, and learn how to budget. So have a plan, then learn how to budget. Number two is learn about business. I, I say that because most of the time people who are looking to invest in whether it's real estate, uh, open up a restaurant, a barber shop, just because you can cook burgers don't mean you know how to run a restaurant. God damn it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the biggest thing why I see people fail. Now you're talking that because shit. Because they'll assume just because they popular or, you know, they the life of the barbecue that their restaurant is going to be successful, but they don't understand accounting. They don't have an attorney. They don't, you know, uh, understand management, leadership, inventory. So because they don't know business, this is why it's hard for them to thrive. And then when you try to help them or show them, hey, you got to have professionals that help you to grow and scale and run, you know, they assume that, oh, well, you're just saying I can't do what I do. No, I'm trying to show you how to buy your time back. Because if you're going out there trying to do everything, you just bought a job again. Come and on, so, man. so yeah, so you got to definitely, you know, start to learn about business. Number four is, is that uh, learning how to leverage the bank's money. So having your credit in position, it doesn't cost you to fix your own credit. But once you understand what is impacting your credit, you can then do everything to reverse all of those things that is impacting it. Once you get your credit right, then you can go to any bank or as many banks in North America and get access to as much capital as you want because you're going to need money to run a business. The other issue that I see with a lot of people is, is that when you're bootstrapping your company, eventually you're going to run out of money. I accidentally bought two of your books. That's all right. We can donate them to you know, somebody. I get one of Jay. Huh? Thank you. And so when you <laughs> when you bootstrapping your company, man, you're eventually going to run out of money. But the banks, they, they always have credit to lend. And so this is why I tell people most individuals who are investors, they don't use their own money. They only leverage the bank's money. And the reason investors leverage the bank's money, Carlos, is because you don't pay taxes on debt. And so if so when I go to the bank and I get a line of credit for 100000 and I know I can go invest into this property, I'm going to take a portion of the 100000 invest it into this asset, and then when I need to get liquid, I just borrow against the asset tax-free, and the tenant's going to pay the rent. The, the rental payments is going to service the debt on that line of credit. Yep. And so because we don't know these different concepts, this is why we always in, in, in stuck mode. And so step number four is, you know, learning how to leverage your credit, learning how to uh, uh, get your credit in position and learning how to deal and borrow and lend money from the banks. And number four is really understanding what what are assets. You know, I think we got in this whole mode of getting the bag and a lot of people, they making a lot of money, but they don't got shit to show for it. You know, I know people who make, you know, two, three million dollars a year, but they just broker at a higher level because if they if they get sick or if they take a day off, they don't make money. I tell people I could take a year off and I'll still eat right? because I got assets that in place that are pay me. And so right. I, I, I don't have to 
you know, sell courses and not that it's anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is, is that utilize all those vehicles that are making you money and dump it into assets. If you stuck, if you just sticking your money in the bank, that's the worst commodity to put your money into. Because I tell people, if the bank is going to take your money and go invest it in real estate and in life insurance, how come we not doing that? So why don't we just go use the bank's money and turn around and do that and then pay them pennies on the dollar for the interest that they charge us? We just got to find vehicles that can service the debt. And so when people are like, oh, well, the, the interest rate on the credit is too high. No, you just don't know how to go find a deal that can pay the interest and put money in your pocket. And so we got to start learning these things, man. And, right. and, and, and most of this stuff is in books and on YouTube videos. So all this shit really free. If you really want to think about it. Well, there you have it, folks. Well, you basically just told these people there is no reason there why is you no don't excuses, have no man. It's really not. It's really not. And when people often say, you know what, I'm scared to do this stuff because I'm, I'm, I don't want to fail. And I tell people, how can you fail at something you're already losing at? It ain't even shit to say after that, Will. I got to consult with you on this book I'm writing. I got you, man. Clearly, you know what the hell goes on. <laughs> Drop your social media, man, so they can catch up with you. At Mr. Will Roundtree, uh, across all social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff, man. Well, I bought both books. I appreciate that, I got man. two copies. Giving one to J-O-N, so you got to come back and sign it. Oh, man. That's any time, man. And we really appreciate you helping our partner. No, thank you for um, the invite. Putting him back on the path to financial success. Absolutely. The more you help him, the less we got to pay him. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a liability is what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> 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 the biggest one on the whole staff, man. Well, I appreciate man, you stopping absolutely, through, Man, absolutely. I appreciate that. And I want y'all to know. The black market is wide open, baby.